when you had your breakthrough and realized that sending two hashes to create the hash graph would work, can you describe that initial conversation with Mance? How did you convey that eureka moment? Yeah, so that's so much fun. I remember exactly where I was walking when I realized, oh, if you just add two hashes to every message, then everyone will know exactly the entire history and you could run 30 year old algorithms to make it work. Now the devil's in the details. It actually took another month to figure out exactly how to get old algorithms to work. They're not exactly the same as the old algorithms. You have to tweak it. It took a long time and a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly how to do all the details. But at the moment that I realized adding two hashes would give you the history, I knew the answer was there. It was obvious at that point, yes, this will work. And in the early days when I was showing this to mathematicians, everybody would look at it and say, well, of course that will work. I don't even understand all the details you're describing, but, but yes, if you add two hashes, obviously that's gonna give you a history, you can do anything. It was just kind of obvious that you could do consensus with no communication at all. So I remember suddenly realizing that while walking, I remember where I was in, in uh, uh, College Station at the time uh, when that happened. I, I told Mance, because this is the way all of our research works, is I tell Mance, hey, I've solved this and I'm excited about it and I explain it to him. And he listens and he understands these things and he's good at technical things. He's not just good at business, although he's amazing at that. Um, so I tell him what happens. And, you know, Mance and I always, I, I am trying to prove a theorem and I find a solution. I call him and I tell him and I explain it to him. And you learn a lot while you're just talking about something, while you're teaching it. And often, then I'll make a discovery and then we'll realize there's a flaw in it. And, you know, we always joke about that. I always joke about that, how, you know, I should really enjoy this for a few minutes before I think about it again, before I realize I was totally wrong. Yeah. So this is a common thing. Mance is used to this. I'll go through this or I'll tell him a really cool way of doing something that's really good. And then I'll come back and say, yeah, but here's even better and explain that one. So this is our common way of doing things. The two hashes thing, though, was a little bit different because there it wasn't, I hope this works, or I hope there's, a, there's no flaw in my proof. It was just a fundamental thing that's obvious in retrospect. And it was kind of obvious that it was true. The details of how to actually do an algorithm are complicated. And I went through a million versions of that with Mance. And I'd gone through a million versions of that with Mance before this point. But this, at this point, it was something that was just obviously right. Basically, a hash graph is the obvious right way to do consensus. And then the hash graph consensus algorithm flows out of that. And it's not obvious, but you know, you work it out and you kind of end up with the hash graph consensus algorithm. Once you know you're gonna have a hash graph, it's kind of, you will kind of end up with something that's gonna be very close to the hash graph consensus algorithm. But the hash graph itself was one of those things that was very simple idea. And once you see it, you know that it's just the right way to do consensus. And so Nance and I always do this. We always go back and forth. It's a lot of fun. Nance, do you remember that? I remember it well. I remember it well. It's funny because somehow Starbucks ends up being the place that we <laughs> we we come to major decisions about about the organization. You know, it happens all the time. It happened recently, right? So there, we had a great Starbucks conversation about a week ago, 